The Nicolas Cage character in the 2005 movie Lord of War was inspired by a real man, the infamous international arms smuggler Victor Boot, who ran a vast weapons empire until a sting operation led by U.S. agents took him down in 2008. A new documentary offers an unprecedented look into Boot's rags to riches story and a detailed look at the man behind the myth. О нем снимают фильмы, пишут книги, а недавно он стал главным злодеем компьютерной игры Виктор Бут. The film now available online is titled The Notorious Mr. Boot, and we're joined by the co-directors Tony Gerber and Maxim Kozdorovkin. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Tony, Max, he, he was called the Merchant of Death, um, and, and, and on 60 Minutes, uh, a U.S. official said he was one of the most dangerous men on the face of the earth. Is that a fair portrayal of this man? Well... Not really. I mean, uh, you know, there are a bunch of somewhat slightly ludicrous action movies made about him. And in reality, for about 20, 25 years, he was making a movie of his own life. He was just an active home video maker. And so our film is made out of over these 200 hours of, of his own home movies. And they're a lot of times very funny, a lot of times darkly comic, a lot of times revealing of this world that has never really been portrayed in this way. Well, that is what's so interesting, because it's really two parallel stories. That's you right. hear about him in the media, and then you see he's kind of a goofball. Like, yeah. It seems as though he had no sense of himself and how other people perceived him. Yeah, the, the, the gulf between the myth and the real man is enormous. And this is something that we discovered. We both came to this legend of Victor Boot hearing all the rumors, hearing all the, the, the notoriety. And, um, uh, you know, one of the stories about him is he's never photographed. And that uh, a Belgian photographer who tried to take a picture of him was threatened with death, right? And then we discover that he's been shooting his own home movies for the last 20 years, very publicly, mm -hmm. not hiding anything. And these two notions of who this man was just did not gel. It didn't make sense. He's now serving 25 years in prison and got taken down in a DEA operation in Bangkok. What really led to his downfall? I think he was kind of convinced of his own good luck and he wasn't, I mean, he had been out of the business for a while and then, you know, an old friend came out of nowhere, presented this business opportunity and uh, he went for it. I think, you know, I mean, Victor was morally blind and kind of the same way that business in general and all businessmen tend to be morally blind. So. You really get that sense of invincibility that yep. he thought that there was no way anyone could ever get a hold of him. How did his wife help you guys in terms of just getting all of that home material, the home footage he shot over two decades? Well, she, you know, she's been a tireless defendant and, uh, and, and campaigner uh, and protesting his innocence. Um, and, you know, um, for us discovering that this trove of 200 hours of home movies existed, we thought, oh my God, we found Hitler's secret diary. <laughs> when you start to look through it, and you realize these are birthday parties, his daughter's birthday parties, they're pony rides, they're clowns, there's ski trips, there's karaoke, you know, and... and there's you, also war zones. And the, there's uh, also yeah. war zones and, and uh, you know, th there's, there was very little sense of, of guilt or culpability. So in terms of the, the, the home movies being trusted to us, because yeah. it was an act of trust, um, there was no sense that, oh my God, there's a smoking gun in there that's gonna, that's gonna do us in, right? Um, but we began to find things that created much more complexity and depth and understanding of this matter. You mentioned that in the film or the documentary, we hear from DEA operatives and UN trafficking experts. It seems as though there was also sort of an industry, like they were bigger arms dealers, mm -hmm. but for some reason, why did he capture so much attention and get that nickname? Well, I think that he made for a great story. And I think that one of the things that we try to explore in the film is that ultimately, arms manufacturers are the real merchants of death and they're the people that are, respons that are responsible for it. It's a huge industry and we're trying to figure out why attaching notoriety to certain figures is so advantageous for governments and for businesses. And so, You both had a chance to interview Boot in prison. Yeah, correct. How would you describe him? He's, uh, he's, he's affable, strangely present, but also focused on details and minutia. I mean, he has this incredible mind and this incredible hunger for knowledge, which I think has kept him alive in prison in many ways, you know. Um, but you know, we both came in expecting this merchant of death character, so it yes. felt like you know you're going to meet with Anthony Hopkins in Silence of the Lambs, <laughs> and he came in shackled in many different ways, 
the, the fear and the paranoia around him in prison was tremendous. Did, did I he mean, appreciate it? Did he like the documentary, just yes or no? Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, but he's kind of a new agey hippie. I mean, all, right, all right, thanks, guys. Tony Max, thank you very much. The Notorious Mr. Boot is now available on iTunes, digital video on demand, and at the website, the Notorious Mr. Boot, spelled B-O-U-T, dot com.